Shaq's house. Shaq's house. Shaq's house. Shaq's house. Shaq's house. Shaq's house. <laughs> What's up, Shaq Housers? How y'all doing? It's your boy Shaq House here. Happy Friday, y'all. It's a gloomy day, but don't that stop you from having no fun and having no smile on your face. All right, check this out. I told you I'd give you part two of the dumbest mutant powers that Marvel's ever done. Well, here it be. And this time we got five, not three. Three was a successful test run. Now we're up in the ante. And there's a pleasant surprise in here. Well, not a pleasant, but a surprise nonetheless. Check it out and enjoy. Stitch. Stitch's mutant power is mild ferrokinesis. She is able to psionically manipulate small pieces of metal with precision, but it's unknown if the limits of her power are genetically based or purely psychological. I say she has a psychological hang-up in regards to her power's limit. I mean, talk about lame. I mean, she even cut up her face one time and refused to let a doctor near her and sutured, her, sutured up her own face herself. I mean, with her power, a needle and a thread, what the hell can she do? Knit me up a sweater? Her power makes her a poor woman's version of Betsy fucking Ross. Next! Piecemeal. Piecemeal had the mutant power to harness various forms of energy and store them within his body. He could mentally attune his body's cellular energy storage to any single specific energy wavelength and frequency, making him mentally linked to that energy. After customizing his system in this manner, he was able to sense that energy from over a distance, and in its presence, he could absorb the energy and, store, and store it in his body for extended periods of time. Also, the more energy that he absorbed, the greater and more bloated he grew in size. When absorbing the dispersed energy signature of the mutant known as Proteus, that was more energy than his body could contain, and it was manifesting itself as a bloating throughout his whole system as he exceeded his power's normal limits. His body at that point looked like a 700-pound, morbidly obese monstrosity, and it was destroyed when he completely absorbed all of Proteus's energy. His mother, the armored hulk above him named Harness, she was also a mutant, and she cruelly abused him during all of his appearances and during his brief time that he was alive. His power pretty makes him, makes him pretty much an energy bank, nothing else. The main drawback to his power is that the more he absorbed, the fatter he got. At one point, he absorbed so much of Proteus' energy, he looked fatter than the blob. Actually, you know what he looked like on that stage? A white male version of Precious. Yeah, Precious. Times 20. Next! The Black Womb. The Black Womb's mutant power includes both advanced mutagenic levels and a stunted aging process. While this gives her an extended lifespan, near immortality that is, her body still undergoes the normal progression of vitality, rendering her susceptible to the effects of aging. Okay, Amanda Mueller, here's some little facts about her right quick. She's actually the mutant matriarch of the Summers family. So she's the great, great, possibly great grandmother of the X-Men known as Cyclops, Havoc, and Vulcan. She's been alive since the 1800s and was known in the newspapers as the Black Womb Killer due to her many miscarriages. But in actuality, she forged a partnership with her OBGYN, Dr. Dr. Nathan Milbury, who was actually Mr. Sinister in disguise. And she was giving her fetuses to him to study their mutant genes. But why is her power so stupid? Because she'll live damn near forever, but she'll still physically age. Hell, by the 1950s, she had black, dried out, wrinkled skin, and she was damn near immobile. Immortality with none of the benefits. That's not a power, that's a mutation. Speaking of which, Jazz. Jazz, he's a mutant whose active X gene mutation was a blue pigmentation of his skin. The Eiffel 65 lyric, you know the one that goes, I'm blue, I'm is the one thing that comes to mind when I think of Jazz, especially since he was an aspiring rapper, albeit very mediocre as you can see. And just to clarify, when you're a mutant, an active X gene means by definition that you just have a mutation, and just that most of the time, powers and abilities spring from that mutation. It could be an extremely meager or lame mutation, like Jazz, or a godlike mutation, like Franklin Richards. So while Jazz didn't have any powers, he was still a mutant. 
Even so, he just had blue skin with no special capabilities. He couldn't even blend in the dark or blend in the shadows. He was one of the many characters from the 2004 comic series District X. Located in Manhattan, District X was a predominantly mutant neighborhood with residents ranging from dirt poor to crime bosses. With Jazz's quote-unquote power, I'm surprised he survived as long as he did. He met his end post-decimation when he was choked to death, and ironically, he did not turn a different shade of blue in the process. Next, Razorback. Razorback's power is the power to instinctively drive and operate any vehicle. And if you hear me laughing right now, it's because this one's a joke. A joke as in, he's not useless. Yeah, that power is actually quite useful. But how can I translate it into something that's Marvel handbook worthy? Watch this and listen. The portion of Razorback's brain, which assimilates and stores an understanding of vehicles, is psionically enhanced. Starting with a basic knowledge of how vehicles are operated, Razorback can quickly and intuitively make mental leaps of logic that lead him to accurate conclusions of how every part of a vehicle, the knob, button, lever, wheel, engine, etc., operates. Besides operational knowledge, Razorback can psionically assess a vehicle's capabilities. He can accurately assess a car's optimal speed, turn radius, braking distance, and just generally handle the vehicle like an expert, demonstrating skill levels that professional NASCAR drivers might take years to properly learn and cultivate into their reflexes. His power also translates partially into maintenance knowledge, allowing him to repair and maintain any of the vehicles that he has operated in addition to driving them. His power works just as well on cars and trucks as it does on space shuttles, airplanes, and even extraterrestrial vehicles, though it's reasonable to assume that he might have more difficulty than normal in understanding the functions of a vehicle designed for non-humanoids, especially if he has no prior knowledge of what type of being the vehicle was designed for or what it can fully do. Though he isn't superhumanly strong, he does possess enhanced muscle mass. In fact, the pig's head mane that he wears as part of his costume is, an, is actually an electrified mane that he can trigger mentally. He's basically a good old boy Texarkana truck driver who got inspired by the heroes of New York City to do the same thing. Came up there to try his, to try his hand at the trade too. But he's a mutant and he's never made contact with any X-Men. I don't even think he's on Krakoa, though he needs to be because they can make good use of that kind of a power. That power is as useful as Doug Ramsey's power. In fact, in the next video I'm going to do, I'm going to show you why his power is useful too, despite everybody that says otherwise. That's what I got now. Like I said, tune in next week. Later. Mansion, apartment. Shack, house. Yes! Yeah. <laughs>